Lovick. Go on now, Ruth. You gotta find Miss Mandy. You gotta tell her. Go on like I told you. From Atlanta. Good news, I hope. <laughs> That's enough, girls. Back to work now. All you budding Rembrandts. Circumstances being what they are. What time is the funeral? It was yesterday. Ms. Dixon, how do you do? I'm Charles DuBose. Please accept my profound sympathy at your father's passing. Thank you, Mr. DuBose. If I may. Your father engaged me to draft his will. The family's meeting inside now. I assumed that you'd want to be... I came here to say goodbye to my father, that is all. As far as a will and family, I have no interest. Miss Dixon, I implore you. It's important. Last will and testament of Mr. David Dixon, Hancock County, state of Georgia, fully sealed and executed on this day, the 10th day of March, 1874. I, David Dixon, bequeath the sum of $1,000 to my brother's wife, Eloise, the sum of $500 each to his children to be dispensed by their father. Item six. To my beloved brother Henry, I give, bequeath, and devise all property owned by me held outside of Hancock County, the sum of which totals 700 acres in Washington County, Georgia. Item seven, I give, bequeath, and devise all the rest and residue of my estate, as well as all I now own and all I may hereafter accumulate, including livestock, farm, and implements, 
15,000 acres of crops on hand and everything else of value I may own at my death to my daughter, Amanda America Dixon. These things I give freely of... Henry, this is a legal proceeding. He's left everything that's worth a damn to her and me nothing. I'm his only goddamn Mr. brother. Mr. Dixon, judge. Henry, please. Now, you know what you are. Y'all sure as hell know you ain't gonna get away with this. Henry! Henry, please! You think I'm gonna lie down like a dog on this? You're wrong. Miss Dixon, I don't know what to say. What did my father tell you about us? We worked together for several days. He spoke to me quite intimately about his business and personal affairs until he knew that I had a clear understanding of the complex nature of his estate. He told you everything? Yes, I believe he did. Y'all know Colonel Ainsworth Rutherford, Charles Bowes. By reputation, I do indeed. Privilege, sir. I appreciate the flattery, son, and let's just hope that the goodwill continues on in the weeks to come. Henry Dixon has hired the colonel to contest the will. On what grounds? Birth records are incomplete. We've been through a war. Records have been lost, burned, destroyed. There's no grounds on which to base Maybe it. so in Atlanta. We were spared here in Hancock County. Now, if there's something irregular, Henry's betting a smart lawyer's going to find it. A waste of good money, you ask me. Well, son, it's not you he appears to be asking. Is it? auditioned me for the part. Said he didn't want a country lawyer drafting a will that a city lawyer like me could turn on its ear. And everything's in good hands, as per his wishes. Ms. Dixon, I would appreciate you staying on. At least till we're out of the woods. Your uncle, he seems quite agitated. Ms. Dixon? Ms. Dixon? Shouldn't be surprised what he did. You're his only child. Nothing surprises me in this family. Will you be staying long? What I do is no concern of yours. Not now. Not ever. Amanda, I... Why are you here? Hmm. It's been a long time. Nearly 11 years. What do you want to say, Julia? Only that is good seeing you again. David Dixon was a man no different from you or I. He worked hard as he lived, and when he died, he left certain legally binding instructions that a percentage of his estate be distributed to Amanda America Dixon, his natural daughter, a 
This relationship between father and daughter is unassailable. Thank you, Your Honor. Is Amanda Dixon David Dixon's natural daughter? How the hell do I know? I wasn't present at the event of her conception, nor do I suspect that you were, Your Honor. However, let's set all that aside for now and assume that she is. We still got us another reason for being here today, somewhat of a bigger fish to fry. There isn't a man, woman, or child in this county who wouldn't say that David Dixon was anything other than a God-fearing Christian. But I am plain stumped to figure out how such a good Christian man could virtually ignore the one person closest to him. His kid brother Henry here. Now, when this comes to court, and I'm sure it will, I am going to show the world that this piece of paper is a fraud, and it will be ruled insupportable. Because any white man in Georgia who leaves a half a million dollar state to some Negro gal claiming to be his daughter is either drunk or mentally incompetent or both. Objection, Your Honor. This is nonsense. Excuse me, Your Honor. Ms. Dixon, will you please tell me what is going on here? You said you knew everything. I said I believed I did. Well, obviously you don't. Ms. Dixon, there's 15,000 acres at stake here. Let him have it. I am done with being humiliated, Mr. DuBose. I have finally found a private life, and I intend to keep it. Your Honor. The, the issue before the court. Your Honor, to my understanding, the ultimate issue here is whether the will is valid. The issue is her paternity, not her race. To my reckoning, Undue pressure by a bastard neither a daughter over a senile father bears consideration. I agree, Mr. DuBose. I need time. All the time and eternity will not turn that gal from black to white. Your Honor, may I have a few words with my learned colleague, with whose late father I went duck hunting with back in 55? Bet you didn't know that, did you? No, sir, I didn't. Now, what we got to do here is get this thing settled here, here and now. Maybe get your gal some cash, that nigger gal. Get the house right back to the rightful owner, back in the hands of the real family. Now, Charlie, we got a responsibility here to rebuild our society, move on into the future. And the best way to do that is to make sure that we keep our friends nice and close. You follow? Yes, sir, I do. Attaboy. Now, you get back to Atlanta. I know some good boys there. Get you set up in a real big game. I appreciate that, sir. <laughs> hey, your daddy, he's real proud of you. Amanda is but one of two people on earth who means everything to me, and it grieves me deeply that to leave anything to the second is to jeopardize all that I might bestow upon the first. All hope now falls to you, Mr. Charles DuBose, whom I pray are up to the task. Yes, I'm sure. Go ahead. Go on. This first part's addressed to me. The second 
to my darling Amanda. My father broke this land, and I myself built his holdings from 170 acres to 15,000. Just like right. him taking all the credit. I held it against the South when they wanted to take it away for no good reason. I even out-talked the almighty General Sherman. I held it against weather and foe, because a man must defend what is rightly his or what's God put him here for. You are all I ever loved, Amanda. I beg you, be brave and do this. This is your home, and you are truly a Dixon, your loving father. What I don't understand is who he could have entrusted to give me this. So well planned. Catch us both the way it did. Two days before he died, that's when he gave it to me. Just like him to leave the hard work for others. Don't you dare speak of my father that way. Forgive me, Miss Mandy. I forgot my place. Well, uh, regardless, we have a decision to make here. I've made mine. Running away again. Stay out of it. Now, now hold on, you two. This case is going nowhere until I understand the truth. <laughs> the truth? And this family? What happened? Where did it all start? Do you remember? Peel has bit up 1,500 piece. All you could find, these ones? Wanna be a big shot. Build this place up, like you say. You gotta stop being such a tightwad. You said don't go over a 1,000. I didn't. I didn't say throw it away You either. don't want them, you take them back. Just stop your bickering, the two of you. You hear? What'd they cost? The boy was 300. The gal was five. She ain't too little to work in the field. I figured she'd be good for breeding stock. On your feet, you. What's your name, boy? They, they, they call him Little Sylvester. You his sister? No, no ma'am, just sold together. Well, can he talk for himself? Oh, yes, ma'am. Normally he can talk like the wind. But the thing is, his mama and his brothers were sold away from him yesterday. I, I reckon he's still scared, son. Send the boy to learn the stables. He's too young to work in the fields. Come on, boy. And what's your name? Julia Francis Sims, ma'am. How old are you? I don't know for sure, ma'am. You speak pretty well, Julia Francis Sims. And it don't look like you ever worked outside, neither. Mm, ain't never had to, ma'am. You ain't lacking in spunk, neither. I can use you, Julia Francis. You come up and stay with me at the house. Go on inside, look for Ruth in the kitchen. She'll settle you in the back room. I can do it. Well, go on, do it. That's good. Let's have a look at you. You're gonna do just fine. Come with me. Thank you, ma'am. It certainly is. 40, 50 cents an acre, prime grazing land. In Louisiana? It's a fact. If you say so. You be careful with that china now. Come all the way from England. Yes, ma'am. Prime grazing land in Louisiana is usually prime swamp, what I hear. Well, you never did listen so good. Not to your fool schemes. Well, I'm going, and that's that. Find a farmland where something grows. Won't be dead long. All right. Double the yield on the test acre by the pond. Mm, what's the magic potion this time? Sheep dung? Cow flops? <laughs> Bat guano. Bat crap. 
from Peru. <laughs> and I'm gonna sell the idea to every one of those boys at the Planters Club. Planters Club, shoot. Them windbags ain't visited their fields in I don't know how long. Wouldn't no sparrows grass from a donkey's hind end. Damn what you start her up for. And I told you about smoking those things in here, turning my curtains black. Damn, that is exactly why I'm leaving here. I was up to me, I'd sell this rundown old place. Good for nothing land, a bony ass stock. Out back, there's a graveyard where your father was buried before his time. It took dicks and blood to clear these fields. And I'll tell you, boy, long as I have a breath in me, this house and the land it stands on will remain dicks. You want to go off and live on a swamp? I'll help you pack. Stoke the fire, girl. Eat water for my bath. Yes, ma'am. Many of you knew my pappin like most of you. The land he planted here in Hancock County was rock outcropping and clay with more brooms, with more broom straw. Julia. You there, girl. Sir? Step into the light. Leave that. Come here. Come here. Your papers say you were owned by a pastor, Delbert Sims. Yes, Master David. Was he good to you? Oh, yes, Master David. He never whipped his people, and he promised to set us free when he died. Didn't quite work out that way, though, did it? No, Master David. After he was dead, his family took the papers and burned them. That's a pretty sad story, Julia. Hold still. Hold still. Put your arm down. Find a nickel for every story I've heard about lost freedom papers. They were freedom papers. I read them. You read them? Yes, Master David. He showed them to me, and I read them. You can read? Pastor Sims had to know teaching slaves to read is against the law. So read this. So you're a liar? I don't lie, Master David. Then read it. We, sh we should not be sat satisfied with a lean and scanty sub sub subsistence. Subsistence. I have experimented with various techniques. Quite novel. Fertilizer. Well, I'll be uh, damned you can read. How about writing? Some, not so good. Um, arithmetic's my favorite. You know, fig figuring with numbers and all. That's so. Yes, sir. Mom was right. You got a fair share of spunk. What else did the good pastor teach you? Church business, mostly write, writing up baptisms and adding up Sunday collections in the account journals. Accounting, huh? Yes, sir. Hell, my own foreman can't count. Can't even read worth a damn. Could be it's a waste of God's talent having you wash dishes and empty chamber pots. You can go.
Mama? Where is she? Gonna find somebody to make a new front porch. A new front porch, huh? Yes, sir. You want to hear what I just did? I got my chores, Master David. Those boys down at the Planners Club just bought 150 sacks of my Peruvian back crap. I had them bet each other that I'd fail. Damn if it wasn't a sight seeing them line up for orders. I'm pleased for you, Master David, but I got my chores. Well, of course you do. I'm not going to get in the way of that. You just go on by. One by. I ain't gonna bite you. We need to build a new porch. I'm tired of these boards. There's rock, and I don't want no rock in my home. You understand? Yes, Mama. She didn't know the facts. Not all of them. Well, now I do. But it doesn't change a thing. Except maybe you thinking your poppy was pure as rose water. What I'm thinking is how you didn't want me. Miss Dixon. I... I'm not here to judge what happened in the past. All I know is that your father's wishes were clear. He wanted you to stay and fight for what he believed belonged to you. Trying to atone is more like it, buying his way to redemption. He wanted this for you, all for you. It's what he worked for, nothing else. Either you're going to respect that, or you're going to walk away like you've done before. Look here, Mama. Look what I got. Prime Louisiana Great Detective, title to Henry Thomas Dixon, free and clear. That's fine, Henry. You go off and live in the French backwater. You got my blessing. I'm going to make some of this, Mama, you'll see. I do hope. You don't think I'll do it, do you? Henry, it don't matter how many hands you got if you can't hunt. Mistress Elizabeth! Mistress Elizabeth, come quick. Something terrible. Oh, Lord, Mistress, you got to come right now, please. What happened? Why was she up here? She's pregnant. How far along? 
far enough along to where a piece of wire either don't stop it or it'd kill them both. I'll get Doc Lovick. You do that and you'll be right smart about what you tell him. Good pastor be right disappointed in you going off and acting so dumb. Besides, you upset our house. We Dixons can do enough of that on our own. Look, what I did maybe wasn't right. But whatever it was, it's not for me to apologize. God knows it happens all the time. If you wasn't raised in a church, you'd know that. Don't look at me like that, Julia. If I was any other white man in Georgia, I wouldn't be any at all. Except maybe to think about whipping you for trying to cost me money. I wish you had whipped me instead. It's finished. It's over. All right, you just go on and have that baby. You hear me, Julia? Let me know that you hear me. Yes, I'm about to, David. Good. Just go on. And we'll all just forget about it. There's no law in the state of Georgia prohibits the willing of property to a Negro. I don't care to stand in that witness box, Mr. Dubose. May not come to that. Legally speaking, there's no reason that you shouldn't be your father's beneficiary. Legally speaking? A cold look at the law. There's no question. Emotion creeps into a thing like this. Huh? You intend to fight? With your help. Thank you, sir. Dr. Lovick, how long have you known the Dixons for? Ever since I started practicing? Over 40 years ago. In the Malara girl, Amanda, how long have you known her for? Well, as long as I guess it's possible, seeing as I delivered her. And who called you out for this delivery? David Dixon. Is it your normal practice to birth Negro babies? Normal? Jesus, no. Well, the Dixons were good business. What with the number of slaves they own? Plus, unlike most of my other patients, they always paid on time and in cash. <laughs> All right, now, you ease off. Ease off. All right, it's coming. It's coming. Jesus, God Almighty. It's a girl. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, you save for your evening prayers. Yes, ma'am. Your words, sir. I swear. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, take away this nasty rag. Oh, no. There, now. Give it to me. Oh, there you 
Snakes in your head thinking about giving away your child. No mother in her right mind do such a thing. Are you listening to me, Julia? You got to calm yourself. Giving away your baby ain't right. And I won't allow it. Well, what you gonna do, Master David? You gonna throw me down on the floor and make another one in me? That what you gonna do if I don't take that baby? That baby ain't mine, it's yours, and I don't want it. You can take it, feed it to the folks. You look me in the eye and say that, Julia. Look at me, I'm talking to you. God damn it, I ought to grant you that wish. But I'll just let it go, I'll just go on and sell her. Get you back to work with no more of this fussing. My later visits to the plantation, the child was always there. Living there? In the house, you mean? Yes, sir. Well, didn't you find this a little unusual, Doctor? I suppose. <laughs> Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Unusual. And what is it that you consider to be unusual? Miss Dixon raising it like she did. First over it like it was her own. Anything else? same time, Julia was there, the mother. To the child, she was a slave. She had played no part in the family. Uh, you might call it unusual. I say that it's damned unnatural. Why? Why would anyone go to such unnatural lengths to hide the truth? He want the whole world to know. To know what? That, that she had some Negro blood in her and therefore was illegitimate and it ruled out an inheritance? Objection. There's no statute in the state of Georgia that prevents a Negro from inheriting land. Colonel Rutherford is just shoveling smoke. Objection. Do so you deny it? Your Honor, this is a most outrageous defamation. Mr. DuBose, I won't permit it. Your Honor, I am speaking to the law of this great state of Georgia. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Colonel Ruff. No further questions. Like. Dr. Shirley, in all your years and travels, you've seen slaveholders grow attached to their servants, especially those in the house. I have. 
Seems a mite incredible that a child could grow up in a household not know who a real mother was. And you don't know the Dixons, or Hancock County for that matter. We take our privacy serious, even inside our own families. Are you telling me that in all your visits there, as the child was growing up, you never wondered if the child knew? I was following my instructions, and I kept my oath. Till now, all this. Very admirable, Doctor. Can you tell us, please, what were those instructions you were given? <clears throat> never to hint as to who the child's real mother was. And why was that, do you think? I have no doubt it was out of rightful concern that the child's affections were tained towards her natural mother, especially since she was there, right with her in the house. Karen Porter walked alongside her every day. But in other words, David Dixon's determination to keep this secret was not motivated by fear, as Colonel Ruff has suggested, but by love by love and extreme devotion which would bind the child as closely as possible to himself even to the exclusion of her own mother so it would seem the kind of devotion that could lead a man easily and logically to leaving all he had to the one person that he cared for more than anyone else in the world objection no he takes find the doctor child grown enough to understand, what were you instructed to tell her about her real mother, should she ever ask? That her mother was from Charleston, that she died in childbirth. It was a shameful falsehood that I was obligated to repeat to a number of neighbors, but thankfully, Ever to the child. And mama's gonna feed that puppy dog. And sister's gonna chase that puppy dog till he curls up with the baby. Hey, 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 my little baby. Hey, Like this? <laughs> or like this? You don't stop, I'll make you ugly. <laughs> that child. He's a child. <laughs> Dairy cows will be mighty obliged when you give up on that old wives' tale about sweet milk baths. Call it what you want. All I know is that child ain't got one whip dark in five years. Looks to me here, you, you, you mark down each year who's the best picker. That wrong? Oh, no, that, that's right. Except you don't give them no reward. No reward. They get good treatment. My own hand-me-down clothes. Gobblers at Christmas for some of them. I'm trying to build this place up. I do enough. You give them a reward, you're getting more good pickers. I told you. You don't see any running off, do you? I'm the most tolerant planter in Hancock County, so you can just quit your going on about it. Why not give them something of their own? Cash, money, land. At least something on a plant garden. Land? That's a fool idea. I'd be breaking the law. You're always talking about how you want loyalty. How you admire hard work. Well, give them something to look up to. Give them something to be responsible You want for. me to do with everybody like I've done with you, that it? Near every one of them can do more if you give them a real chance to better their lives. I took my chance with you, Julia. That's about all the ingratitude I can take right now. You just go on, settle down, do your job. Just do your job. Cash 
cash money for especially good work, that I might do. How much? Two bits at the end of the year. All right, 50 cents. God damn it. You are something. Chance come by and I just took it. Took it is all. In all those years, you knew nothing? You never suspected? What do you want to know, child? Where she's at? Why we don't live like a real family? Heaven's sake, Commander, don't you think we live like a real family? Yes, but... Aren't you happy with your old poppy? Hmm. There now. Do you want me to lie or tell her the truth? Julia? Not for me to say, Master Day. Don't you carry on like that with me. God. Maybe I will tell her the truth. Is that what you want? No. All right, then. Someday she got to know. Not today. Feeling a bit worried. I hear it's a fine school, teaching all sorts of good things. I want to stay here. Going away makes you strong. Besides, you're going to come back a smart young lady and teach Julia a thing or two. Don't want to. When I was your age, I used to get scared. So scared. But I, I wasn't nearly as brave as you are. Wasn't nearly as pretty, neither. I miss you. You too. But you can't live your whole life Way out on this old farm, never seeing new faces. Out there is a whole world, and it's all for you. Out there, you can do anything you want. Miss Mandy, anything at all.
How did you find out? I beg your pardon? How did you discover the truth? You don't have to be too specific, but I do need to know. I was 24. It took 14 years? It would have been longer if it weren't for Brooks. You man and your goddamn wolf. Oh, Grant. Lieutenant Brooks is only the messenger. Don't deserve and you ain't getting another red cent from us. Don't you give him another penny. Every dollar they get means one more dead boy. This war ain't been nothing but misery. I have to forgive my mother, Lieutenant. She's just a tad opinionated. My grandmother sees the war the same way. No talking her out of it. Mrs. Dixon, please take my solicitations as delivered with only the most honorable of intentions. The Confederacy can count on my continued support, Lieutenant. Hell, it's the price of my freedom. Mr. Dixon, would you object to my return on occasion? I might visit with your most charming daughter. I have no objection. At least none I can think of at the moment. Well, then allow me to leave before you do. You are ahead. Thank you. Good day. Thank you, sir. Our Lieutenant Reed appears to be smitten. He has to come courting. What did you tell him? No harm in it. No harm? This isn't a nunnery. Where would it lead? As a pap used to say about his recipe for roast duck, first shoot your duck. Can you really be so cavalier? A man is a beautiful young woman. We can't hide that. We can't deny her the life she deserves. It'll be fine. Well, she's all Dixon now. If she falls in love, marries this boy, or any other boy for that matter, then what? The first child's dark. What happens then? Not necessarily so. But it might be so. Boy comes from a good family. Should be the belle of the ball in Augusta. For nine months, maybe. Mama. You can't run from this one. I'm not. I'm just being hopeful. Daydreaming's more like it. Do you realize the anguish it could cause? Is that what she deserves? He came courting, did he? Oh, yes. He surely did. And? He got right to the point. What, no brothers? Sisters? What you do out here all by yourself? Well, now and then, I go and sneak off and play with the other children down in the quarters. Oh, the niggers. Mm, Granddad didn't approve of my socializing with him, and I didn't do it much. Only when I was especially lonely. You were raised by your grandma. Yes, and Poppy, my father. <laughs> you never mentioned your mother. I don't know much about her, really, except that she was from Charleston and she met my father while he was there on business. And he was bringing her home and she was pretty far along carrying me. And they went long home when she suddenly got sick. And and she died delivering me. I'm sorry. I... No, no, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, it's normal to want to know about someone's family, their upbringing. And I only wish I'd known it myself. I mean, a girl and a mother. Well, it's a basic thing, isn't it? Well, maybe I ought to ask a question with an easier answer. I'm not going to tell you my age now. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking of maybe a, something like, well, <laughs> well, let's say, uh, how about will you marry me? <laughs> Do you want to marry him? <laughs> of course I want to marry him. Poppy and Grand, they're both so... I don't know what they think or why. 
I want you to help me. Julia. Don't put me in the middle, Amanda. Julia, please. You have a way with Harper. He listens to I you. I don't know what you're asking. Now, you're the one who taught me to be smart and strong. You always said that to me from when I was little. And now that I'm doing it, you won't help me. Why is that? It's not my place. Well, you have to do this, Amanda, homie, let Julia. Let it be. Let it Ladies. be. Let me be. Morning, Amanda. Poppy's in the study. Morning, Mr. Dixon. Ma'am? Morning. Good morning, sir. Miss Dixon? You're aware of my fondness for Amanda? I am. Well, then it should come as no surprise. What, what I mean to say, sir, is, uh, uh, uh... Get on with it, boy. <laughs> yes. Just hold your horses, son. I already made up my mind. The answer is, regrettably, not yet. Not yet? I, I, I don't understand. I can't allow you to marry Amanda right now. With the war and times being so uncertain. Oh, I'm out of action. I got money set. He can give you a flat no if you want that. No, ma'am, I don't want that. My advice, just leave well enough alone, at least for now. Ms. Dixon, if you'd rather not continue with this just now. May I ask you? Can anyone really understand what goes on inside another family? No, I suppose not. I mean, we were all happy once, at least I know I was. Even the madman in the street was once a baby gurgling in his mother's arms. But here, our entire life, the whole thing was built on a lie. And what I wonder now is, where does the truth fit? And how can it possibly matter? Perhaps it can help you find your way again. Help rebuild things. It happened right after Brooks left. How long do you think you can keep me here? Amanda, dear. Oh, dear me. How could you do this? I am so ashamed. Well, it's for your own good. My own good? This is my life. He's just a boy. There'll be others. I don't want others. Brooks is the man I love. Why are you doing this to me? Tell her. Tell her why. Oh, I will. Julia, get out. This has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me? You leave this no, alone. No, you leave it alone! Tell her. Tell me what? David, get her out of here! She's right, Mama. I should have told you years ago. Told me what? No, David. Julia is your mother. <laughs> that, that, that's why they don't want you to marry?
you are not my mother. You hear me? You are not my mother. My mother is dead. My mother is dead. My mother is dead. <laughs> That was the last time you saw each other after Brooks proposed? Eleven years. I left home the next day, went with Brooks to Augusta, got married. And you didn't tell him? I was so afraid. Afraid of what he'd think, afraid that he'd leave me. I couldn't be the wife he wanted. I felt so much dread. Something awful had to happen. straight here from Hancock County. Oh, what happened? I went by your father's plantation. What? To ask for help, my pa. You see, your daddy's farm, about the only one still operating. Well, he has gone out in some business, so I, I stopped by the stables. Got to talk to some of the new hands. Chatting away, catching up on the news. Oh, you know them darkies always gossiping the way they do. Gossiping about what? You know goddamn well I prayed they were lying. That I'd come back here and you'd sit it right. That's what I prayed. You can't sit it right now, can you? You can't sit it right. You can't sit it right, can you? It's all right. It's all right. So you left for Louisiana shortly after Gail was born. How long you been gone now? I left at 39. Mama died in 66. I came back for the funeral. And uh, when you came home, did you find that things had changed? They were in as sorry a state as I could ever imagine. Can you explain it, please? It was the manner in which my brother conducted the affairs of the plantation. Julia, the Negro gala, house girl when I left, was carrying on much of the business. And this uh, troubled you? Hell yes. Troubled me. Would you ever speak to him about it? More than once. He wouldn't discuss it. Wouldn't discuss her. Your witness, sir? had your place in Louisiana for how long? 35 years. That's a long time, Mr. Dixon. And how's it doing? Crops, livestock, and all? Struggling. Like most everybody in the South these days. Yes, most everybody, but not exactly everybody. Did your mother treat both her sons equally? Objection. Your Honor, is that really relevant? It will be, if you let me continue. Go on. Henry? Usually, yes. He treated us both equal, most times. Except when it came to business, right? Will you tell the court what happened between you and your brother on the day that your mother's will was read? We had a disagreement. Disagreement? I have a number of witnesses who called it a stripping fight, a fight over the fact that Mama Dixon left virtually her entire estate to your brother. That's because he worked her against me. He influenced her? Hell yes. 
Well, you were a son, too. Why couldn't you influence her? Because I wasn't around. I ain't spoke to Mama in nearly 20 years. Damn it. And yet you would have us believe that Ms. Dixon could influence her father over the years and miles, but given the same conditions, a parent and a child, you couldn't do the same to your own mama? Well, I have no more questions. You may step down, Mr. Dixon. You and that black holler think you can hide behind the law and get away with this? What does he want me to testify about? He aims to prove that you had undue influence over Mr. Dixon. Undue influence? That's why I need to know the extent of influence, if any, you did have, Julia. You can't afford surprises on this. There was no influence. After you left, he became preoccupied. All he thought about, all he did was about you. You hear Brooks Reed came by the stable today? With Amanda? She wasn't with him. Well, maybe she's on the way. She's not. How do you know she's not? He found out about her. What are you doing? Going after her. Try to find her before he does. Try to bring her back home. David, where are you going? Mama, I'll be away for a while. What do you mean, you're going away? For how long? Julia will run things. What are you saying? I'm saying she's in charge, and you help her. Anybody don't want to take orders or money from you, they don't get paid until I get back. All right? Yes, sir. I was long gone by the time he got to Augusta. Four months later, he came back home. He hired a detective to keep looking. Lost the trail in Baltimore. Then what? Did he keep searching? Yes. When Miss Elizabeth took sick, he was afraid she might die while he was gone. Tore him up. He just kept sending money to that bank. He sent you money? Nearly 11 years. Did you receive it? I did. Well, then it's established free and clear. All those years sending you money, that surely proves his affection for you. You're supposed to be in bed. There's something I need you to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to live forever. Mm -hmm. Anything goes wrong with my will. That's what this is about. I've retained an attorney what to... What about Amanda? Just do what it says in that letter. What did you do for Amanda? I tried to make things right. I did my best for Amanda. Your best better be giving her this land. All of it. That house, she belongs there, is hers. I worked hard to protect it. I built this. I stayed here all these goddamn years doing your business for her. Now you tell me you didn't deny my daughter. I see. Tell me. I believe I did right. But that don't mean there won't be a fight. If there is, then you have that letter. I can make it. 
We've been through rough patches before, haven't we? We got through them together. Isn't that so? The way we worked together, you and me, was pretty good. Yes, Master David. Well, then, that's fine. Everything's just fine. Good night, Julia. Good night. two days later. I'd better go for Pam. You just tell the truth. We'll be fine. Ms. Dixon? Your father loved you. And you are his legitimate heir. I know he did. But you. I won't. You gave me away and watched me grow up a stranger. I was never a stranger to you, and you know that. You lied to me. Every second, every minute I was growing up. I protected you. You let me think my mother was dead. You let me think I was what I am not. Ten years it took me to face up to that lie. To be able to live in a world where I belong. Amanda. You rejected me every day. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't dark enough. I loved you every day. I never stopped. How can you Amanda, me? you do not know what it's like to be bought and sold, to be treated like some kind of animal. Nobody should know that. My baby knows freedom. The moment I saw them wrap you in that clean white cloth, fuss over you and sing you a lullaby, I knew. I had to give you up so you could have a better life. I had to. Oh, Amanda, look at you. You're scold, well-traveled, fine manners, free to be whatever you want to be. Now, what better gift could I give you? A mother. Oh, Amanda. Oh, no. But I'd do it again. The fact is that you ran the Dixon place. You were in charge. You had control, even of him. Isn't that right? No, sir. I never seen a slave be in charge of a master. But after that, after you were freed, what were your responsibilities? I ordered the seed, stock, and bale of material. Did you hire and fire? Yes. Including white men? Yes. And you're sitting there telling us that David Dixon allowed you 
a Negro gal to fire a white man off his place? Yes, sir, he did, if they were lazy bums. <laughs> and he allowed this? I believe he had respect for my work, trust in my decisions. You made all the decisions, and he respected you for. My friends, this is arrogance. This confirms in my mind that this Negro gal had control of an old and enfeebled man. Objection, Your Honor. That's speculation. No more questions, Your Honor. Your witness, sir. I have no questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Your Honor, I need a moment to confer with my client. Don't have all day, Counselor. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I know. I don't recommend putting you up there, especially if you don't have to. Ladies. People are already riled up. I have. Not this part here. Amanda is but one of two people on Earth who means everything to me. And it grieves me deeply that to leave anything at all to the second is to jeopardize all that I might bestow to the first. The first is Julia. My father knew enough about probate law to know that if he left anything at all to his slave mistress, the entire will would be thrown out. And his most precious asset would get nothing. Julia. I still don't think you should be on the stand. I want to. I have to. I'm tired of being afraid of who I am. Leave it. Your Honor, I wish to call Ms. Amanda America Dixon to the stand. I approach, Your Honor. This is an unscheduled witness. Your Honor, it is her life on trial here. Surely she gets a say. Uh -huh. Well, I'd have to agree, and I wouldn't mind hearing it. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you before God? I do. Please state your name. Amanda America Dixon. Now, Miss Dixon. They called me America because I was born free daughter of the late David Dixon and Julia Francis Sims Dixon up there. That's my mother. Order. Order, I say. No more questions. Wasn't it true that your Negro mother ran the Dixon place? I mean, paid the bills, made the plans, bought the goods, sold the harvest? With my father, that's right. Together, they made a good team and increased the value of the property my uncle wants to take away. You're a very clever little girl. I'll accept that as a compliment, sir. But the point is that your father never did anything without her. Isn't that correct? My father did what he wanted. Are you suggesting to me that he didn't listen to her? He listened to her, and he did what he wanted. Like most of us, sir, my father was a contradiction. But when he had it in his mind to do something, he did it just the way he wanted. And for that, he was loved by some and hated by others. Sometimes it was both at the same time. courtroom owns slaves. Every man on this jury owns slaves. It was our legal right then. Y'all know how they are. You know how they behave. Females among them connived and tempted even the most virtuous and good amongst our white men. Now, one can only speculate that due to his isolated circumstances, 
And because of a pernicious force of evil manipulation, David Dixon fell prey to and committed this, the most unconscionable sin. Now, gentlemen, we all know that there's no invention on God's green earth more scheming and devious than the mind of an evil woman. And David Dixon fell victim to such a woman, a Negro woman who so schemed to know him as intimately as any white wife. A woman calculating design assured that the product of their lust, a bastard Negro dollar, was left in the state with more than all the other farms in this courtroom combined. Now, do you need a court of law to tell you that that ain't acceptable? Now, do you want to win back a small part of our way of life, my fellow Southerners? Then I say, overturn this mockery of what we stand for. Indeed, what our fathers and brothers and sons died for. And let us send back this odious piece of litter to the late Mr. Lincoln's <laughs> White House and let them know that that is not the way that we do things here in Georgia. In Georgia, we do it right. <laughs> Order, I say. Mr. DuBose, your summation, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Pause for words. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. DuBose. Gentlemen of the jury, Colonel Rutherford over there, oh boy, oh boy, he's a good man and a great lawyer. He used to go duck hunting with my late father. Did you know that? Oh, heck, of course you didn't. I didn't even know till recently. But a man can be good, a man can be great, and still be behind the times. Things are moving so fast these days. A lot of people would think that older folks would have trouble keeping up. But just because a man is over 60 does not mean he's enfeebled. It's obvious with Colonel Rutherford. You all heard him here today. You heard him, the same as I heard Mr. David Dixon when he made out his will in my office. And I will tell you, that man was not enfeebled. He knew exactly what he was doing, every word comma and period of it. And what he was doing was exercising his God-given American right to wheel his property to whomever he chose. Same right as all of you have, and I have, Colonel Rutherford, Judge Cartner, everyone in here. This trial is not about Lincoln or fighting the war all over again. Those are just poison words that Colonel Rutherford is using to obscure the truth of what is going on here today. This trial is not about some sort of cockeyed revenge. This trial is about something far bigger than that, far bigger. It is about strangers placing value and judgment on those whom we choose to love and how we choose to express it. And it is relevant to every American who believes when they die and pass on into God's loving arms, that there's not a jury in a courtroom somewhere thinks they know better what to do with all a man comes by through honesty and hard work while he's still alive on this earth. Gentlemen, if you overturn David Dixon's wheel, you will never sleep easy again. Do you know why? 
because you will be setting a precedent that when you die, and we all must, that your final wishes may very well die with you. Jerry's back. Already. Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Let's say, in the case of Henry Thomas Dixon versus the last will and testament of David Dixon, we find the will proper and valid oh. and oh, executed within the legal confines of the laws of the state of Georgia.